there are levels to work ethic on some level that I think if you if people like you and I, and I think probably a lot of the people who watch these are deeply obsessive, crazy people on some level that um, just go and go and go. If you're not one of those people uh, and you want to make it in music, you better figure out how to become one of those people. Um, th but then yeah. from there, it's figuring to out a how degree. to a degree. Well, to a degree that there's there's. But learning how to manage that and wrangle mm. that and, and you know, in a judo-like way, take the intensity and sort of direct it in the right way and learn how to take breaks, that's sort of the professional step from the people that just stay up all night and make, make their shit uh, and make yeah. beats and do all that kind of stuff that when you then learn how to be a professional, it's really about, that's, a, that's why we talk about this stuff all the time. I think, you know, there's not a lot of people who have these discussions and maybe getting back to the reason we're doing this at all is because these are important conversations that people don't talk about a lot. People yeah. I mean, lot. the narrative to, to hit the other side of this, the narrative that we're told is that you have to struggle in order to make art in, mm -hmm. in all levels. Like the struggle is part of it. Yeah. Um, and I, and I do believe to an extent that is um, a, a marker of a, a creative journey. I think you have to have felt some sort of struggle or mishap along the way to understand what it would mean to overcome that uh, and, and write about it. And um, you're and overcompensating for something or trying to make yeah. up for something. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, but the hustle and the narrative, of the hustle and the, the feet up on the console working on a Sunday narrative is just, it's a little absurd that, that that's yeah. the only way to do it of course and and let's let's take a step back from that and say um if you got to work on a sunday you got to work on a sunday but to say that's the only way and if you're not doing this you're not working as hard as i am so you must be lazy and then now believing that you're a lazy creator because you're not working on a sunday when you're trying to hang out with your your significant other your wife your husband like that and, and then that how not taking into account how that time with your family is going to rehabilitate you and get you back into the zone. The time it takes you to take 15 minutes of sprints up a hill to get the blood flowing, to come back to the process. But thinking I can't do that because I'll be called out for being lazy because I'm out of the beach on Sunday and so and so's got his feet up on the console, you know, diving in. It's like, well, did he take Wednesday off? Like, mm. we, we're not seeing that part. We're seeing this highly curated hustle and flow, uh, you know, um, depiction of what it means to be creative in the audio field versus, oh, well, that person left out that, you know, that time when they were, they took the weekend, the, the weekday off instead of the weekend, the show that they were in on Sunday. And if they do work seven days a week and it's been a 50 year career and cool, again, I'll just say that it's despite that that they're having the success. It's not because of it. Well, it, it, maybe an interesting example, uh, Eric Valentine, who I worked uh, worked with, worked under for years, was a guy who was really like six days a week, 14 hours a day for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And now he is moved on to the next thing and, and like semi-retired slash he's doing mm. lots of great YouTube videos. You guys should all check those out if you haven't watched those on his Instagram and on YouTube, him mm. going through all kinds of amazing recording technique stuff, mixing um, but he's now completely shifted away. He hasn't tapered off or adjusted. He's like, he's like, I'm starting a family now. I'm doing a different thing. Yeah. So maybe on, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't want to put words in mouth. I don't think he like burned out necessarily, but you know, if you want to do this until you're 60 or 70, you do have to find a way to balance some of this stuff. Yeah. Um, and you know, whether you're a mixer, uh, or whether you're a songwriter or whatever, like one of the things that, and we may have talked about this before, one of the things I see all the time, all the time, young songwriters running out of shit to write about because they're doing two sessions a day all the time and they don't have and they at some point they burn out or run out of lyrics or run out of yeah. just run out of stuff to talk about and you got to go live life it's the same thing with like you know you watch the career of stand-up comedians i love looking at other art forms to get parallels you look at stand-up yeah, comedians and at a certain point they just start talking about airplane food because all their and hotels because all they're doing is yeah, flying yeah, on yeah. planes and living in hotels and they don't really have shit to talk about or you get someone who's super super rich like i remember oh, i can't remember the album uh jay-z put out an album where all he talked about was super rich guy stuff and it was like a little too no, rich and people yeah, were just like was like i don't really get it like what are you yeah. talking about but and that uh, brings that, that brings me to uh, as the mixer in that the the final the finality part of the um of the process i'm mixing sometimes it seems like the same song 
on every other day mm-hmm. even though i'm hired to mix 10 songs that week lyrically a lot of them are the same yeah and it, it stems from what you're talking about i mean but that's the again back to narratives that's the narrative of the la songwriting scene is you go you keep going and and you might and, and not 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 to say don't do this at the same time the positive approach to this would be that if you wrote the same song with the same title. I mean, there's examples of this thing. You and yeah, I even talked about talk this. About you know, it's a numbers game. Just do it. Keep writing that chandelier. And then one time that song's going to hit and it's going to work. And, it, you know, it, it might. Yeah. Um, you know, I, 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 I would argue that maybe you should, like, challenge yourself a little bit further. To, but you can revisit and recycle. And same thing with... with with techniques and productions and maybe you want to use the Juno every day, but some days you should go to the profit. Like yeah. that Juno is old faithful. And we've heard that sound the entire time. I mean, I've, I have 16 cents on this Christmas song yesterday and they're all Junos and I love every single one of them. It's never going to get old. I'm like, Oh shit. How do I make that just slightly different? Like, let me put an H3000 with this preset on this one. Let me do this with the Uber mod on this one. Like, let me see if I can make this Juno feel slightly different than we all know that it feels like. Yeah. But that's just me trying to exert some creative juices. Um, Yo, uh, as it an works. aside, Uber mod on Juno. Yeah, it's that is magic. The Juno, the Juno crazy, like the Juno six with the chorus plus some Uber mod plus some Uber mod just just put you into space, man. It's yeah, so cool. exa- exactly, <laughs> exactly. 